Social engineering and phishing is probably 70 to 90% of all successful data breaches. At least half of that social engineering and phishing is trying to trick you out of your password. Well, if you're using multi-factor authentication, there's no password to steal. My name is Roger Grimes. I'm a data-driven defense evangelist you know before. I pretty much go around the country and the world trying to tell people how to best protect themselves against cyber threats. Multi-factor authentication or MFA is when you have to provide two different proofs, authentication proofs that you actually own a digital identity. The opposite of multi-factor authentication is single-factor authentication. And that would be something like a login name and password. Like anybody could know your login name. That's your kind of your identity label but the password that you provide with it, you're saying, hey, I only supposedly only I know the password, and so I'm giving you proof that I own this digital identity, and that's called single-factor authentication. So the idea with multi-factor authentication is that it's harder for a hacker to compromise two or more different forms of proof than a single bit of proof. So all things considered, multi-factor authentication is stronger than single-factor authentication, or at least that's the theory in what you hope works out. The dangers and vulnerabilities of MFA are actually fairly significant. We don't talk about them enough. The number one problem is that there's a lot of industry titans that have made the claim that MFA stops 99% of attacks. I mean, major people, people and companies that I love and respect say, oh, use MFA, it stops 99% of attacks. It's not true, never will be. If I tell you, you know, hey, if you put on a seatbelt, it stops your chances of injury 99%. Well, you're more likely to speed and do a whole lot of other things thinking that seatbelt has these special superpowers of protection. But if I tell you the seatbelt really helps stop you from having serious injuries, but you can still get hurt, <laughs> you're probably gonna take more precautions. And that's what we need to do. Say, use MFA, use phishing resistant MFA. It's a great thing. It stops a huge percentage of attacks, 30, 50%, but it doesn't stop 99%. There is a couple of examples of well-known large attacks against MFA that have compromised many organizations. Probably the most common is something known as network session hijacking. And this is this probably works against 90, 95% of multi-factor authentication solutions. With this attack, the adversary sends a phishing email to the victim with an email that looks like it's from some trusted brand that they like, Microsoft or Google or their employer or Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn or something like that. And it's asking them to log on in with their MFA credential. Well, if the victim took time to look at the link that they've been asked to click on, they would see that link doesn't go to Microsoft, doesn't go to Google, doesn't go to Twitter, doesn't go to LinkedIn or their employer, uh, but it's phishing, it's social engineering. And we know about a third of employees, if they're not trained, will click on any particular phishing link that's sent their way. Oh, let me click. And then what it does is it takes them to what's called a man in the middle transparent proxy website, where it just takes them to a computer that's under control of the hacker that then connects them to the real website or service that the victim thought they were going into in the first place. And that transparent proxy website in the middle is able to capture anything that the victim types in, their login name, their password, their MFA code, their fingerprint if they swipe it in, something like that and anything that website wants to display to the user. So the real website is all displayed to the user, but it's all going through this man in the middle website that the attacker can get. So they can get information that's stored in that website. Like if the website, if you go to buy something, maybe they're picking up your credit card information. If you type that in, they can get your login name, they can get your password, they can get your pen, they can get your one-time password code. By the time you've learned that something's gone wrong, you know, they've stolen all your money or ordered a bunch of items for you. That's probably the most common attack. If you're not a aware that your MFA solution can be easily hacked, you're more likely to fall for being hacked. <laughs> How can organizations best educate their employees about different types of risk around MFA and different types of MFA attacks? I think it, you need to use your best defense in depth combinations of policy, technical defenses, and just person to person education, video education to tell people about the common types of attacks that work against their particular type of MFA, because the attacks that work against biometrics or one-time passwords or push-based authentication or tokens or one of the Google or Microsoft Authenticator apps don't work against other types of MFA. So priority number one is you need to educate your employees that these are the common types of attacks against your type of MFA 
This is how you recognize those attacks, and this is what you should do. Report them to IT, ignore them, delete them. Maybe at home you're just deleting them, but at work you're certainly reporting them. And then, hopefully using a good system like we have at Know Before, you can actually send simulated phishing tests to see if they'll fall victim to the exact type of attack that you educated them about. And the people that fail those simulated phishing tests get more education, so you're putting the right education and the right amounts to the right people that need it.